UFC Vegas 88, Tai Tuavasa versus Marcin Tybora just ended, and this is going to be my full card post fight. I'm going to go through every single fight on the card and give you my reaction and breakdown. And what a barn burner, legendary fight night card this was in the Apex. Starting off with the very first fight of the night, Chad Anheliger versus Hara Lampos Grigorio. Grigorio grappled in the first round, had a little bit of success in the first round. I thought he won the first round. Then the second round, it was just grappling that had no success. And Helliger ended up in an advantageous position on the ground. And, and Helliger was landing better shots on the feet as well. So won the second round. And then by the third round, Grigory was completely exhausted. There was like an eye poke or a head clash. I can't remember in the third round. Grigory took the full amount of time basically to recover because he really wanted to recover his cardio. After that, Chad and Helliger just starts walking him down, beating him up. I thought he was going to find the finish, to be quite honest. Didn't find the finish, but clearly won the third round. You could make an argument 10-8 for the third round. And it was just an embarrassing performance from Grigorio because even the success he had was really just grappling with really no damage. And for the most part, Chad and Helliger, once the cardio started to kind of wear down of Grigorio, Chad and Helliger just started walking him down, beating him up, smashing him, winning in some of the positions where he would almost get taken down, reverse the position, end up in an advantageous position. And Chad and Helliger, even though he's old and not, you know, a super high-level fighter, was able to get it done via decision. Moving up on the card, Thiago Moises versus Mitch Ramirez. Thiago Moises wins via third-round leg kick TKO. Kind of an early stoppage, but I 100% agree with the stoppage, even though it was an early stoppage. I don't know if that makes sense or not. But basically, this fight was first-round Moises was kind of winning on the feet and then ended up getting a takedown like a minute and a half left, had his back, beating him up, almost got a rear naked choke to end the round. Second round was Thiago Moises out, out striking him on the feet, landing some good leg kicks, really started to slam the leg kicks in round two, landed some in round one as well. And Mitch Ramirez was just kind of trying to clinch and really having no success and the striking wasn't really having any success. His leg was getting battered. I think one of the very first leg kicks in the second round, you could tell the leg was really bothering him. Third round starts off, Thiago Moises slams a calf kick immediately, and Mitch Ramirez just falls to the ground in agony, and Moises just follows up, just starts throwing multiple kicks to the legs as he's laying there kind of defenseless on the ground, and the referee steps in. It was super quick, but at the end of the day, I think Mitch Ramirez was done. I mean, his leg was completely obliterated. Basically, from the beginning of round two, his leg was completely obliterated. So Moises gets it done. I mean, was he supposed to get it done against a guy like Mitch Ramirez? Yes. But overall, dominated in every facet, in the striking, in the grappling. Almost had that submission in the first round. Mitch Ramirez just clinched up and really didn't do a whole lot with this fight at all. So, Thiago Moises gets it done. I mean, he's still a very good fighter. I don't know if he'll ever be, like, a top 15 guy again. But he gets a dominant win against Mitch Ramirez. A much-needed uh, win against Mitch Ramirez. And uh, we'll see what he does next. Moving up on the card, Jacqueline Amorin versus Corey McKenna. Basically, they're striking, trading some kicks. And then McKenna kind of clinches up. Amorim pulls guard. Like it was it was almost like a half takedown, half guard pull. Then from there on out. And Mike Beltran really almost screwed this fight up badly. And I kind of almost wish he did. He got bailed out because Amorim was still able to find the submission. But the second they went to the ground, Amorim started to look to lock up a triangle choke. And McKenna kind of reached her hand out like she was about to tap. And she didn't tap. In the replay, you could clearly see she didn't tap. Mike Beltran yells, stop, stop. Like he's stopping the fight and he reaches in. And Amorim releases the triangle choke. And then he's like, never mind, go, go, go. And then she goes back to start trying to look to submit her again. And she finds the arm bar and submits her. And what's funny is McKenna actually tapped one time after that. And, and Mike Beltran didn't stop it. And then finally the arm got fully extended and she started tapping rapidly. So I feel like the second time was kind of, well, I, I don't think she would honestly... I don't think she was fake tapping. We were kind of debating this in the live chat a little bit. I think she was hesitating on whether or not she can tap or whether she might be able to withstand it and get out of it. But Mike Beltran almost screwed this up. If Amorim would have lost, or I mean, or if he would have stopped it and then replayed it, it would have been a no contest. They would have screwed uh, Amorim out of some out of a submission win. It's just you got to be you got to be more decisive than that. You got to be sure of what's going on before you yell her to release a submission hold. But Beltran, you know. He has some authoritarian complex anyway. Like he treats fighters like shit. And, you know, you can tell these referees kind of get high on their 
kind of end up on their high horse with their power and respect my authority. And he yells stop all violently and he kind of reaches in, almost screwed up a fight. It was almost a massive debacle if Amorim wouldn't immediately cinched up an arm bar right after that. It would, I mean, imagine McKenna gets out of that and then ends up, ends up winning the fight by decision or something. It would have been a catastrophe for Mike Beltran. So that was a catastrophe avoided. Moving up on the car, we have Danny Silva versus Josh Coolibau. Split decision win for Danny Silva. I thought he should have won this fight, to be quite honest. I don't think it should have been a split decision. Uh, early, Silva hurt him and then was looking for like a Darsh choke. The first round was competitive, uh, but I thought Silva was landing the better shots and he was kind of clinching up a bit and kind of getting the back throughout the fight. Silva won the first round. Second round, I thought was razor close and I thought maybe you could give it to Koulibau. I thought he landed a little bit more shots on the feet, but basically they would clinch up. And Cooley Bow would just give up his back, and then he would just get controlled up against the fence, and it really wasn't a good look. And then in the third round, Silva was pressuring him, landing big shots. Cooley Bow, um, you know, his leg was hurt. His, his leg was getting chopped in the third round as well, and he clearly lost the third round. So second or first and third round, I thought he clearly lost. I could even see a 30-27 for Danny Silva. Just outstruck him, outgrappled him. It was really the control time in the grappling that won him the fight in a way. I know it's damage-based scoring, but... It had Koulibau thinking about the grappling, and that's what led to the success on the feet. And then also in some of those close rounds where it's hard to score damage, okay, we see control time from Danny Silva was able to control. And it was like every single time he would shoot it on a takedown or look to clinch, boom, immediate like swim under the arm and ends up on the back, kind of in that you know uh, body lock position from the back up against the fence, would drag him down for a little bit. He wouldn't do much damage with it, but the positional control and then the fact that he was winning on the feet, the fact that he was chopping the legs, and the fact that he was just more effective on the feet in general, won him this fight. Split decision is absolutely crazy, but we had some questionable decisions to say the least on this card. Moving up on the card, we have Ode Osborne versus Jafel Filio. Jafel Filio, Pulls out his Bryce Mitchell impression after the fight. But dominant first round rear naked choke win. Uh, they struck a little bit. Was competitive. Gets a takedown. Controls him. Takes a little bit to work into mount. Does a little bit of damage. It doesn't get right there. It doesn't cut through him like butter. But kind of gets in full mount. Eventually gets the back. Looking to set up a rear naked choke. Can't find it. Can't find it. Finally just sinks it in. And gets Ode Osborne to tap. And honestly, it's like Ode Osborne... His takedown defense, his grappling just isn't there. It just really isn't there. He's just always getting out grappled by guys that have decent grappling. And that's what happened in this fight. This is exactly what I expected to happen in this fight. So Ode Osborne definitely needs to work on his takedown defense. Definitely needs to work on his grappling. I mean, he's 12 and 7 overall now. So that's not good for his career. Filio really just kind of mauled him on the ground. Didn't do a whole lot of damage, but did land some shots. But Eventually worked in that rear naked choke and got the finish in the towards the end of the first round. Moving up on the card, Chelsea Chandler versus Josiane Nunez or Josiane Nunez. I don't remember how to pronounce her name. What a shit fight this was. I'm actually disgusted by this. Nunez was winning on the feet. Chandler got her take her took her down, and then Nunez was looking for a submission. Doesn't let it go as Chandler picks her up, slams her on her head, and then lands a little bit of decent ground pound. I honestly thought she was going to get finished from slamming on, getting slammed on her head. So Chandler wins the first round. Second round, a little bit of a hot take. Nunez was landing on the feet, and then she ends up, she even drops her to a knee at one point with like a big shot and breaks her nose. But then Nunez got taken down and gave up her back, but but you didn't really have Chandler doing a whole lot. So I thought there was a case to be made. I wouldn't die on this hill at all. I thought there was a case to maybe be made that Nunez maybe won that round because she hurt her early a little bit, but then she did get taken down control for the majority of the round. And But there wasn't a whole lot of damage in that second round from Chelsea Chandler at all. But she did do some. She did have some elbows and whatnot from, from Mount, I think it was, for a little bit, but she wasn't doing a whole lot of damage. And then the third round, Nunez was just walking her down, blasting her with big shots. Nunez clearly won the third round. So, it, you know, I don't think it's a wrong decision for Chelsea Chandler, 29-28. She wins the first and second. But I could see a scenario where second and third would go to Jossie and Nunez. And definitely, obviously, the third round's undebatable. And the first round's really not debatable either. It's clearly Chandler. So it really comes down to that second round. But what a low-level fight this was. Honestly, this was one of the worst fights I've ever seen. It was complete garbage. It was atrocious. It was an embarrassment. Chelsea Chandler did get hit at one point. I think in the first round, turned her back and sprinted away again. It wasn't as egregious as a Norma Dumont fight. But she, this is a habit of her. She gets clipped. She turns her back and sprints for the hills. Moving up on the card, we have Mike Davis versus Natan Levy. Mike Davis wins via second round arm triangle. His fight was good while it lasted. Early Levy got dropped, ended up giving up his back after he got dropped. And 
there was really no damage from Davis on his back. And Levy was kind of throwing shots like behind him, like kind of like Volk Islam. Didn't do a whole lot of damage there. Then he gets back to his feet and lands some good knees to the body. And I thought, you know what? Maybe there's a case that Natan Levy won that first round. I wouldn't die on that hill by any means. Uh, and then it ends in like a leg lock scramble. Mike Davis is looking for a leg lock. I wouldn't die on this hill by any means. I think Mike Davis probably should edge it out with a drop in the initial like 10 seconds. But I thought maybe there was a case in the second round. It didn't matter. Levy landed a body kick, then threw a head kick, slipped, ended up on the ground. There was a scramble on the ground. And basically, you know, Davis just is just way, just better on the ground. There, there were some scrambles where it looked like Levy might get out and end up on top. But Davis, his hips were so strong, turning into him, ends up on top. And basically easily finds an arm triangle. I thought Levy was like confident in his arm triangle defense because he wasn't really defending it at all before it was even locked in. And Davis kind of started to step off the side control, but then kind of maintain the mount because he was worried about not getting the submission and losing the position of full mount. But eventually just cinched it down and finished him and got him to tap. I mean, it just seemed like Levy just offered it up. And I mean, it seemed, almost in a way seemed like he wanted out. I mean, I didn't get that vibe from prior to that, but it just seemed like he offered it too easy. But Mike Davis does has a, have a very good ground game. But overall, this was a fun fight while it lasted. Mike Davis comes out on the mic and tells, you know, says basically what I've been saying about a lot of these guys. A lot of these guys only fight because they're getting paid. I understand that they're fighting for the paycheck. But some people, a lot of fans have this inclination that fighters love fighting and they're doing it because they love it. A lot of these guys are just there for a paycheck. Mike Davis is inactive. He doesn't care to fight. He didn't care. He called out a couple bad, like Clay Guida and the boys and Patty Pimlet, which was a decent call out. But he said, you know, I don't really even want to do this. I just do it because I'm good at it. So it's kind of sad to see in a way. So I want to figure out I mentioned in this. It's just kind of sad that Mike Davis is like, yeah, I don't even want to fight. But I'm forced to fight because I need to collect a paycheck. But overall, impressive on a winning streak, well-rounded. Is Natan Levy the greatest fighter ever? No, he's not at all. But... Mike Davis gets it done, and he gets it done via finish. He won both rounds, arguably. I mean, most people would probably say that he won both rounds. And I would like to see him test it. I don't know how long he's going to sit out after this fight, but I would like to see him test it against a little bit more quality guy in his next fight. Moving up on the card. I believe this is the first fight on the main card. Yeah, it is. Gerald Mearshart versus Brian Barbarina. Barbarina has no business being at middleweight. Absolutely no business being at middleweight. First round. They're striking. Mearshart's kind of pressing forward. They both look sloppy as hell. Mearshart gets a takedown. Barbarina scrambles back up after the double leg takedown, after a little bit of control time. Uh, then he gets another takedown, looking, starting looking for the Kimura, eventually ends up in full mount. Uh, Brian Barbarina looks to scramble back up, gives up his neck, and Mearshart looks for the guillotine to end the first round. 10-9, Gerald Mearshart first round. Then the second round, multiple, I think it was two takedowns. Barbarina scrambled back up after one, got another takedown, ends up just working his way to the back squeezes hard and puts out Barbarina. It was right on the chin. And it looked like he might not get the finish. It looked like he might not get the finish, but he just kept squeezing and squeezing. We know Gerald Mearshart's a submission machine. Has an unbelievable squeeze, especially once he gets your back. And just it looked like a neck crank. Boom, just keeps squeezing and squeezing. And Brian Barbarina goes out. Gerald Mearshart, I think he had something like 27 submission wins coming into this fight. You know, it, it, it was a solid performance. But overall, honestly, what is Bar Brian Barbarina doing at middleweight? He, I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, Gerald Mearshart looked like a bodybuilder compared to Brian Barbarina. It was crazy. And Brian Barbarina always gets out grappled. So this was a horrible stylistic matchup for him. He looked two weight classes smaller than Gerald Mearshart. And he looked horrible. Even in the striking, he looked horrible. There was a decent amount of striking in this matchup. And Gerald Mearshart was even landing. So it was basically Gerald Mearshart easily ragdolling him, easily out grappling him, easily taking him down. And Brian Barbarina had nothing to offer on the ground. Couldn't get up, couldn't hip escape, couldn't get a, you know, get a knee on the belly and push him away and get some space and, you know, feet on hips and push him away. It's just Barbarina gets taken down, he gets controlled and he gets dominant. I know he I know I said he scrambled up a couple times, but it was like he would scramble up, get taken right back down. He had nothing to offer against Gerald Mearshart and Gerald Mearshart chokes him out cold in the second round. Moving up on the card, we have Macy Chasson versus Panny Kianzad. Chasson gets a takedown early, and then Panny Kianzad kind of scrambles back to her feet, and there's some scrambles there, and she ends up back to her feet. Then they're in the clinch for a little bit. And, Pan and I think Panny Kianzad, prior to the first takedown, it wasn't a lot of time. I thought she was winning the striking exchanges, but not by much. Panny Kianzad looks for a takedown. She looks for a takedown. She gets a takedown. Then they end up in another scramble. Macy Chasson, I believe, was looking for like a leg lock of some sort. Then ends up being a more of a scramble, and Panny Kianzad gives up her back, gets her back taken. Chasson jumps on her back and finds a rear naked choke in the first round, like midway through the first round. 
And honestly, you know, Macy Chaston was saying, I'm back, baby. And it was like, okay. And then I started to think about it. I was like thinking, you're super low level. But then I started to think about it. If she can make weight at 135, which she did for this fight, I believe. I don't think she's one of the people that missed weight. The division's god awful. Macy Chasson could literally be a future champion. How crazy is that? That's how bad the women's bantamweight division is. And Penny Kianzad, she's inactive. Macy Chasson been out for a while since that uh, upkick TKO to the body from Irene Aldana, and she said she went to a dark place after that, and it really she didn't know if she was going to fight again. But now she's dialing in her training camp, and she got it done. First round rear naked choke. There was a, I think there was quite a few rear naked. There was quite a few submissions on this card. There was multiple rear naked chokes on this card. Chasson gets it done against Penny Kianzad, and it's a legit title contender in the bantamweight division. How crazy is that? And I'm not even saying based off this win. I'm just saying the depth of the division is so bad. She's a legit contender. Moving up on the card to probably the most interesting fight on the card and the most interesting and controversial decision on the card. We have Christian Rodriguez versus Isaac Dolgarian. Christian Rodriguez gets the split decision. I think two judges had it 28-27 and one ju Two judges had it 28-27 for Christian Rodriguez. One judge had it 28-27 for Isaac Dolgarian. I believe that's what it was. Let me actually pull up the scorecard real quick. I believe I saved the scorecard. Yes, I did. Perfect. So two judges had it 28-27 for Christian Rodriguez. And yep, I had it right. So you have Ron McCarthy scoring it for Christian Rodriguez, two and three. And you have Anthony Maness scoring it one and two for Dolgarian. And, Christian, and Saul D'Amato, two and three for Christian Rodriguez. I'm going to be honest that my initial gut reaction to this fight, I thought it was a robbery. Because you look at the fight, it's I feel like it's fairly straightforward to score. Early in the first round, uh, Christian Rodriguez landed at a knee early, but then got taken down and just got absolutely dominated, destroyed, ground and pound, ragdolled, almost an arm triangle from Dolgarian in the first round. I thought it was over. I thought it was tight. I thought he had it. 10-8 first round, clear as day for Isaac Dolgarian. Second round, Rodriguez was getting ragdolled and out grappled. Landed a couple knees, one on like an entry, one also in the clinch that landed pretty solid. Dolgarian had some moments where he kind of rushed forward and landed a couple combinations, but clearly last minute and a half of the round, the momentum was starting to go in Christian Rodriguez's favor. You could see Dolgarian getting tired, and you could see the momentum changing at the end of the second round. I thought the second round, based on control time, was Dolgarian's. And I understand it scored on damage, but Dolgarian also did land a couple big punches in the second round as well. So I said, you know what? You know, you had Christian Rodriguez land those two solid knees. It was basically it. I don't know what the stats look like, and maybe I'm forgetting one or two here, which could matter. But the, the biggest shots of the, of the round were the knees from uh, Christian Rodriguez, but also Dolgarian landed some on the feet. Plus he has like four minutes of control time. That's how much he outgrappled him in the fourth round. So I thought, okay, most likely second round goes to Dolgarian. I was pretty confident that it went to Dolgarian, but I was thinking about it, and I told, I was talking about it in my live stream. I said, you know what? Don't be surprised, because Dolgarian did almost no damage with the grappling. So when he had him down, no ground to pound. When he had him in the clinch, there was no shots there. And then he only landed those couple really sloppy shots from space, where there was a couple big punches there, just to close the distance. And then the third round. The third round, Dolgarian looked atrocious. There was multiple times I thought somehow he was out cold the way he was laying. He was so gassed. He was in such horrible positions. He was face down, sniffing the canvas, and ends up flattened out, getting the piss beat out of him. I thought for sure it was going to get stopped, but Christian Rodriguez was tired as well and just got absolutely mauled and destroyed in the third round. Got back up towards the tail end of the third round, got out struck on the feet, but got dominated close to a finish multiple times in the third round. Clear 10-8 round, third round for Christian Rodriguez. So you have... Round one, 10 8 for Isaac Dolgarian. Round three, 10 8 for Christian Rodriguez. It comes down to that second round. I ultimately thought, and maybe I'll go back and rewatch it tomorrow. I thought Dolgarian should have had that second round. I thought the damage was close. It's not like Rodriguez did a lot of damage in the second round. And you have like four minutes of control time, three and a half minutes of control time, something along those lines, getting ragdolled. And I understand it's damage based to scoring. But again, at the end of the day, when it's even, they have to look at other factors to judge the fight. And it's not like Rodriguez did a crazy amount of damage in the second round. So initial gut reaction to it was robbery. And I think a lot of people are going to say robbery. I haven't really paid too close attention to the online scorecards, but the chat was saying robbery as well. But I do think there's a slight case. I do think there's a slight case, but ultimately I think it should have been 28, 27 for Isaac Dolgarian. And, and honestly, Dolgarian looked super impressive, super impressive in this fight. The grappling was unbelievable, but the gas tank wasn't there. He'd never been out of the first round. 
He had never been out of the first round, and I was questioning his cardio after that first round, and he started that second half of the second round was really where the body language started to look horrible. The takedowns came a little bit labored. Rodriguez was working back to his feet a little bit more. But man, when he has cardio, when he's fresh in that first round, the takedowns are good. The scrambles are good. The jujitsu is good. He's taking the back. He's mounting him. He's looking for arm triangles. Super impressive. It's against a Christian Rodriguez, who I think is kind of small for the weight class. But super impressive. But Christian Rodriguez, I mean, how often has he done this? It's like he'll lose a first round, get dominated in the first round like he did against Raul Rosas, and then he somehow comes back and wins. So I think this is going to be a super controversial scorecard. I think this is going to be, you know, have a lot of people debating, you know, is this rigged? I was saying, you know, Isaac Dolgarian the guy that was supposed to sign with the full send, Nelk Boys, and like didn't like the deal they were offering. I'm like, Dana White slipped a couple bucks in the judges' pockets and we're like, listen, if it's a close fight, you rob him. You rob him. So maybe that's the case. Maybe the Nelk Boys are paying him off. Maybe that that's what it could be. I don't know. But I think it was a bit of a questionable decision, but I do kind of understand in hindsight, especially after thinking about, okay, well, wait a second. He didn't really do a whole lot with that grappling in the second round. So Isaac Dolgarian, overall, I'm kind of disappointed he lost, but at the same time, I'm kind of happy he lost. Because when you look that terrible and you're shooting on these really sloppy takedowns and your, your face is just flat in the mat, and there was multiple times, and I want somebody to comment down below and let me know if they saw this. There was multiple times where nothing would really happen, but he would be in like a grappling exchange and he would literally look limp. He would look dead because he was that gassed out. He's got to work on that cardio or... He should have kind of disengaged a little bit more in the first and second round and just kind of struck a little bit and then went back to the grappling. But when you go full force 24-7 nonstop, similar to the way Raul Rosas Jr. did in the first round, this is what's going to happen, especially against a gritty, tough, durable, scrappy guy like Rodriguez. And, and Rodriguez, I think he needs to find a way to go back down to bantamweight. He was a legit contender there. He's got to stop missing weight. So I would have liked to see him lose just because for being a weight bully, him going up in weight and getting dominated would have been actually kind of hilarious. I hate when guys you know, fight at a weight class that can't make weight. So ultimately, Isaac Dolgarian gets a loss here. Maybe the Nelk boys paid off the judges. I don't know. I'm just joking around. But Christian Rodriguez gets a decision win, a controversial split decision win. Moving up on the card, we have OSP, Ovin St. Preux versus Kennedy and Zek Chubu. Split decision win for OSP. I think OSP clearly won this fight. Honestly, outside of the third round, this was, a, this was really a garbage fight. It felt like the first two rounds they were sparring. OSP was landing the better shots. OSP was chopping the legs. And I scored the first two rounds pretty clearly for OSP. But the first round was close. I thought the first round was close. Just a lot of straight shots from Nzechiwu, and it just seemed like he was backing up a bit, and he was super tentative. And then the third round, Nzechiwu got dropped with an uppercut. It kind of OSP palmed the back of the head and then landed an uppercut. And then, you know, after that, it seemed like OSP started to gas, and then OSP started to kind of brawl, too, and he started getting clipped up with some shots. Some step-in knees to the body from Nzechiwu. I thought he could finish him with that, but he kept... He, he only threw like three of them and he wouldn't go back to it. And you could see OSP's body was hurt. But OSP, OSP, even with the hurt body, was throwing and brawling in the third round. Third round was fun to watch. First two rounds was like a shitty sparring match. It was it was boring me to death. I mean, this card, I was already, I joked around at the beginning of the video and said, oh, this was one of the best Apex cards of all time. It's getting around. This was one of those fights that like, damn, am I really live streaming watching this? And I was like, oh my goodness. And that's you and OSP need to be cut. But OSP gets the win. He gritted out that third round. I even thought you could make a case that OSP still won the third round, you know, especially considering he dropped him early. But the third round's up for debate. First and second round clearly went to OSP, in my opinion. Was landing good leg kicks, was landing better combinations, was landing harder shots in general. And then, you know, third round, he started to just tire out. But it's crazy to me in Zetshuwu. I know he's not super young either, but OSP's old as hell. Barely getting a win over the dead body of Shogun Hua. And now in Zetshuwu's losing to him. That's craziness. That's absolutely craziness. Honestly, I, I may never do predictions again. You, you do predictions. You do this, you do a couple hours of research for predictions, and then you get half most of the card wrong to begin with. I did horrible in picks tonight. So OSP gets it done. Got it done with his striking. Both guys should – I mean, not both guys should be – Kennedy and Zetshuwu should be ashamed of himself. Could have been more aggressive. Was landing with the straights, but just wasn't aggressive enough. Was just backing up. Was, like, fearful of OSP's power, I guess. And ultimately, it cost him the fight. It shouldn't have been a split decision. OSP clearly won the fight. Moving up on the card to the co-main event, Brian Battle versus Anj Losa. This ended in no contest. First round, Losa was getting kind of pieced up, ate, ate some knees, looked for some takedowns, got out scrambled on the ground, ended up on the bottom, got full mounted for a brief second, scrambled back to his feet. 
Uh, but clearly, Brian Battle was winning this fight, was landing the better shots. Losa was kind of moving around, and really, the grappling never came close to being successful. Second round, similar scenario where Brian Battle's winning and landing on the feet, and we didn't get that far into the second round. There's a minute into the second round, and there was like an exchange where Losa kind of like fainted a takedown that came up, head clash, and then on the break, there was kind of like a thumb grazing the eye of Losa. And I thought, okay, it's going to be fine. The fight's going to get back to here in a second. I'm going to be honest, I agree with Brian Battle. I think Losa won it out of there. He won it out of there desperately. I think this is poor mismanagement by the ref. I think this is poor mismanagement by the doctor as well. Because Los is like, oh, it's a little bit blurry, blah, blah, blah. But Los's eye looked perfectly fine. It was wide open. It wasn't like solid shut or anything. And uh, he's like, oh, well, I'm going to bring in the doctor. And I understand they can bring in the doctor with the cold compress, but they should tell the doctor, just, just go away. Let's give him some time, right? And this is why I think Losa wanted out. Losa didn't try to, you know, continue to take his full time. Like a minute in, he just says to the ref, he says to the doc and ref, he says, I can't see. I can't see. The second they can say, you, you, I can't see, the fight's over. And that's what he wanted. I think he knew he was losing. I think he just was like, okay, I'd rather take this no contest than an L. Let me get out of here. And uh, I think everyone knew it, man. I really do think everyone knew it. It's not like he was holding his eye desperately. You know, I, I know eye pokes can be bad. I know even grazing, you know, you barely touch your eye can hurt. But the way he didn't take any time, and the ref should have told the doctor, bring in the cold compress, and then they should have told him to go away. And they're telling him to put the cold compress on. He's like, no, 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 no. They, the ref had to, like, argue with him to put the cold compress on. And immediately says, oh, I can't see. I can't see. And he's like, okay, waved it off. Wave it off. Even Bisming was caught on camera afterwards. He, you thought he was, you could tell he was telling Brian Battle, I think he was, wanted a way out. The most interesting moment of the whole night was they announced the fight. The referee walks off. I think it was Beltran again. Walks off, leaves him in the center. Angelosa kind of turns to Brian Battle. Brian Battle's like, you fucking pussy. And he's like, and then all of a sudden, once people get there, it's like Angelos is ready to kill him. He's like, I'll kill you. And Brian Battle's like, I was beating your ass. And they're separated. They're separated. And it's just crazy to me. Losa wanted, and Brian Battle said this in his post-fight interview. Losa wanted to fight now, but he didn't want to fight 10 seconds ago. Now all of a sudden he wants to fight. It made no sense. And Brian Battle said, I was beating his ass. He was looking for a way out. It was clear as day. And uh, I think, he, you know, he's a bitch, basically, is what he said. I don't remember the exact quote from him, but... I think he's right. I usually don't jump on these trains because you don't know with an eye poke. The fact that you're waiting one minute and you're already telling the doc, I can't see, can't see. He wanted no, he wanted nothing to do with returning that fight. Whether he was, he already felt it was an off night, whether he just knew, okay, I lost the first round. This guy's fast. This guy's powerful. I couldn't take him down. I don't know, but he quit in there in my opinion. It was the, it was the slightest eye graze, which I know in turn could cause damage. But the fact that he didn't even want any time, he didn't want to take the full five minutes. He took 60 seconds. Said, so, oh, I can't see. End the fight for me. That's that's what he wanted. So Ange Losa, I think this is an embarrassment. And I really think, you know, this Ange Losa, this Cody Brundage or Cody Bumdage, really, and you know, those types of wins or no contest type fights, this is Aljamain Sterling and Piotr Jan's fault. It's Jan's fault for throwing the illegal knee. Aljo set the precedent by putting on an acting performance and flailing around on the ground and end up winning a title off of it. And now guys are like, you know what? I'm going to take my easy way out. I'm going to take my easy way out with this. And that's what he did. And that's what he did. And then no contest in the second round, Brian battle was going to win this fight pretty clearly, uh, most likely by decision, but he might've been able to find a finish. Honestly, we're a minute into the second round. So you don't really know what was going to happen, but I'm pretty confident battle was going to win this fight. And I would pick him in a rematch and he says he's ready to go whenever. So I hope they run it back. Now it's kind of an intriguing fight considering the kind of history of this fight with the eye poke. I want to see this ran back, run it back next week at the apex, run it back at that shit stain card. That's an absolute dog shit card. Rose Nama Yunus versus Amanda Hebas. Ew. So run it back on there, add that to the main card and you know, we'll get one better fight card fight on that card. Moving on to the main event. We have Tai Tuavasa versus Marcin Tybora. <laughs> the heavyweight division is absolute dog shit. Tai Tuavasa gets finished via rear naked choke in the first round. And Tuavasa is now on a four fight losing streak. He's 15 and seven overall. And he got finished. Let me repeat this. He got finished by Marcin Tybora. I'm not sure. I, I said this before the fight. I said, look, I picked Ty because of his power, but. He's not that good. He almost got finished by Greg Hardy, who's literally a bum, washed out of BKFC. And Ty strikes me as a guy who doesn't train, who probably is an alcoholic, and people just hype up Ty Tuavasa because he has knockout power and because he drinks alcohol out of shoes. And 
I thought, okay, Tuivasa is probably still going to get the first round KO. And he started landing some hellacious standing elbows early and cut the weird ass haircut of Marcin Tabora. Cut him right, you know, where the, I don't even know what to call it, what was going on with his haircut, but cut him in the bald spot of his haircut on the side of his head, like kind of towards the top side of his head. But Marcin Tabora still kind of looking for the sloppy takedowns. It was the ugliest takedowns I've ever seen in my life. Like, he was so slow on the takedowns, and they were so labored. He was, like, at the chest of Tuavasa, and Tuavasa was, like, bucking him a little bit. And then eventually, Marcin Tabora gets in on a double leg. He locks his hands, and Tuavasa just starts throwing punches from the, you know, like, opposite side of where the head is around as Tabora takes him down. Tabora takes him down. With ease, Tuavasa has no jujitsu, no ability to get up, and eventually Tybora takes his back. And the most embarrassing part of this entire performance for Tai Tuavasa, he's on his hands and knees, face wide open, side of his head, side of his head wide open, and Tybora is just hitting him like a ping pong ball, bink, 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 and Tuavasa just like, just looking around like, like, what are you doing? Do try to do something. You don't train any jujitsu. You can't try to escape this position by any means. You don't want to go to your back and maybe try to hip escape or something from full mount. You're just sitting on your hands and knees and just getting pieced up by Marcin Tybora. That was crazy. And eventually, Marcin Tybora looks for the rear naked choke, finds the rear naked choke, and chokes Tai Tuivasa out. He held onto it. It looked like Tai Tuivasa because it was a kind of a weird angle off to the side up against the fence. It looked like Tuivasa might be able to like try and survive, but because it, it was towards the end of the round, it was at this point, it's already towards the end of the round, but he's breathing heavily. He's not moving at all. He's not fighting the hands at all. They're just at a weird angle. And eventually Tuivasa just goes limp and the referee stops the fight. What an embarrassing performance from Tai Tuivasa. Dude's got stopped. If I'm not mistaken, he got stopped in his last four fights. You, you got to lay up. This was the easiest fight you could possibly get. Ty, Marcin Tybora. Or Marcin Tabor, I think is actually how you pronounce it. And you got choked out and you got dogged in the first round. Outside of a couple elbows, you got dogged by Mar Marcin Tibora. What? What? At this point, I know the UFC isn't going to cut Tai Tuivasa. They like him. Oh, he drinks out of shoes. Oh, that's his entire personality. He's a scrub. The entire heavyweight division is full of just horrible fighters. And the reason I think that is, and I've said this many times, is because of UFC Peg. If you're an elite athlete that is the size of a guy like Tai Tuovasa, you're going to play football, you're going to play basketball, you're going to play baseball, you're going to play one of those sports that's going to pay you hundreds of millions of dollars. You're not going to be fighting in the UFC. So that's why the heavyweight division and the light heavyweight division are the least skilled divisions in the UFC in terms of the men's divisions. And I don't think Tai Tuovasa trains at all. He has no jujitsu. He's never had any grappling. Spivak mauled him on the ground. And honestly, I don't know where he goes from here. I mean, what... What, what what fight are they going to give him? I mean, Marcin Tybora was the layup for Tom Aspinall coming back from a serious injury after he got wheeled out of the cage in the world's smallest chair. That was the layup fight for Tom Aspinall. They gave you that same layup fight and you shit the bed and you get destroyed in the first round by Tybora? I think it's been like 10 years since I, Tybora even found a submission. And that, that, that moment, and go back and watch it if you haven't seen it, when he's on all fours, just getting smacked up by ground to pound. And he's just like, I'm like, what in the hell is going on? I was laughing my ass off on live show. I couldn't believe how bad he was. The heavyweight division is an absolute dog shit division. And it's being held up by Jones with his injury. And it's going to be held up by Steve Miocic, who's answering phones at the fire department. Hasn't fought in three years. And I don't know what more to say. But Ty Tuovasa lost. The UFC was expecting him to win. And Tuovasa's career is in dire straits. One more loss. And I don't even know who you give him at this point. I say you book, you just feed, you want to build someone off Tai Tuivasa's name? It's not going to be Marcin Tabora. Build Robellus Despain. Let's do Tai Tuivasa versus Robellus Despain. Let's feed him to Robellus Despain. Brutal first round KO one way or another. And Despain gets exposed or Tuivasa, or Despain gets exposed where he builds his name off of Tuivasa. So one or the other, and Tuivasa could potentially get back on the winning track with an, against an inexperienced guy. But at the end of the day, Tuivasa just has no grappling. And has no ability. I, I don't think he's trained in jujitsu. And, uh, you know, honestly, to steal a line from uh, Conor McGregor talking about Gilbert Burns, it's like Ty Tuivasa showed up looking like a fat lesbian tonight. 
and had no grappling. And if he didn't find the KO, he could stuff a takedown. He didn't even try to stuff the takedown. And Tybor doesn't even have like some elite level wrestling. Imagine what a guy with decent wrestling would do to Tai Tuivasa. It, it, it would embarrass him badly. I mean, Spivak isn't even that good. And look what he did to him. So let me know what you guys thought of the card down in the comments. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And thank you so much for watching.